in the previous video, I took a look at um, this nine-step um, manual uh, by no trinomial tree, and um, I investigated how PUPDPM would be used to execute the backward recursion. And the value I obtained here for the American call option, based on parameters from Brody to Temple, using nine steps was eight dollars seventy eight eight dollars approximately seventy nine and that result here using vba code espen hoag vba code is the same as what i obtain here using the manual tree eight dollars seventy nine approximately when i looked at the um value of the static tree using those parameter inputs for the call american call option uh, the results was identical and for the dynamic tree um, using a structure outlined by hoag and developed here in terms of um, uh, c++ uh, the result I obtained was using those parameters the results i obtained for these parameters was again identical 878 so all goes to show that both snippets of C++ codes are robust. A uh, second major finding here is that when we had used a 6,000 step uh, step size here, the binomial, the trinomial, the static trinomial, the static tr trinomial tree uh, didn't cope that well so the, the estimation was killed now let's just run it to see what happens and we'll come back to it and then we'll put in 6000 here for um, the dynamic tree which should be more efficient and faster um, and it turns out in this instance it did seem to work okay so previously when we had run this estimation um, 6,000 steps was aborted. Now it's taken 7.54 steps. So actually the estimation did manage um, to be executed um, and it takes 7.54 seconds using the static trinomial tree using um, the dynamic tree right? Um, when we run the same estimation same parameter values same step size it's taking four seconds approximately so it's it's a uh, it's a bit faster uh, note the results are the same 9.0657 come back to the static tree and 9.0657 also so the main improvement we observe here in terms of the dynamic tree is just speed and we've noted noted in previous estimations sometimes the 6000 steps didn't manage to execute okay so um another test here is um just to verify that the uh, our code is uh, working proper properly we could change this specification from being a call to being a put and again we might adjust to again nine steps and we'll see why in a moment well the reason why is because we have a manual tree of nine steps and we can run that and again come here and we change our p our c here the call to a put and then we change the number of steps from being six thousand back to just nine and when we run that it'll execute uh, with a small amount of latency so we're getting 1755 and for the static code we're also getting 1755 there's a tiny difference in terms of speed so speed generally for larger step sizes it's more noticeable the level of efficiency okay so how do i set that out then from where i I started with the trinomial. Well, in this instance, it's important to note that what we had set out in the manual tree was a call option, trinomial American. It was for an American call option. 
and um, we can now investigate uh, what the value of a put option is. So one way of of leveraging the material here in terms of the, the tree we've constructed is to move or copy. So we're going to copy and we're going to copy the trinomial, the trinomial call and we're going to create a copy. So it'll just say trinomial call two and that's trinomial, that's the original. So we'll just bring this um, worksheet um, just over here and uh, we might rename it to being a trinomial put and it's a, going to be an American put option. Okay, now it's a just to see in terms of how do we make that change, well in terms of the VBA code to estimate a nine step uh, American call we just replace the uh, American pot, we just replace the C with a P and the value we get is 1755 which again is the same as what we have observed here, 1755 I might just copy that value and paste in to um, the Excel spreadsheet so we'll just take that value here in the output for the 9 step pot option 9 step American pot option, copy, go back in to our Excel spreadsheet, uh, keeping in mind it's the trinomial put. I'll paste the value here that we have here, so I'll just paste and when it goes in it doesn't automatically go in a blank font, so I have to make sure that happens. The value here is associated with the call, American call option. How do we change this to be an American put? It's a very simple change. The stock price tree, the trinomial tree, remains identical, so that doesn't change in any respect. All these values in terms of U and D remain unchanged, whether we're talking about a call or a put option. PU, PD, PM estimated exactly the same way. The only change that I make in terms of uh, denoting this as the put option is to change the ultimate or the final set of nodes here from being s minus k s minus the exercise to being the exercise minus s okay so here just to note um we have the exercise and we would say the exercise minus the relevant s so for the for this cell here the relevant stock price reference is SU and it will be SU to the power of uh, 9. SU to the power of 9. So I'll just return that. And of course, the value of the put option, the zeros, um, this is an out of the money option given that the stock price is so high relative to the exercise. But when I come down, the value of the options will become the intrinsic value of the options has got to be higher. And we then um, re-estimate, so we now have to um, do the same as before um, we, uh, just to note that for the American option um, for the uh, for the American, American option we have to verify is the intrinsic value greater than the time value, so the time value doesn't change but this specification for the um, pot has to change, so I delete here, instead of S minus K, it's got to be K minus the relevant S, so I minus this S here, and I return, and then um, likewise, um, I take this cell and I drag it along, And the values adjust with the in the money option, in the money option values appearing at lower i. And again, doesn't matter which way I can drag this here and then pull it up. Right, and the values and take this cell here and drag back and then pull that down and keep doing that until we get back to the first node 
And when I get back to the first node, the value that should appear in terms of the estimation here should be equivalent to this value here, the 1755. So um, in terms of what I'm doing here, this represents the backward recursion. And I'm taking, if you like, again, um, I'm taking the, I'm applying the P, U, the P, M, and the P, D, and each of these, if we just want to look at that for a second, if we take this node here, I'm referencing these three cells, I'm also referencing P, U, P, M, P, D, so it's the maximum of the exercise minus the relevant stock price, and then I'm taking the time value, E, so, so it's E negative R by the time step, times again p u p d p m and p d and then each of the cell references are for otherwise l l 33 l 34 l 35 okay so we take that and we pull it down we should drag it along and again, we're saying the value that I recover at the end should be equivalent to 1755. Just pull that down. Do it again. Okay, so keep iterating that process. And basically, I'm implementing, if you like, the backward recursion to the model. And then I pull this ultimately back. And we get 1755038, which is exactly the C++ value that I had for the static and dynamic code configuration for C++. And exactly is uh, estimated here using Espen Hoag's VBA code for the trinomial tree. Again, the major thing to notice here, the big difference between static and dynamic memory in the static memory, in the static tree, in other words, when we use this particular configuration, the in the static construction, the binomial tree is constructed using this double vector. And we're defining S in terms of I and J. So the entire stock price trinomial stock prices or vector is stored. In other words, if this set of code here is used to generate the entire tree and in the static setup that all the values in terms of all the elements here, all the nodes are stored into memory and then they have to be at each instance they have to be drawn down when we're estimating the value of the options, the time value of the options here. In the dynamic tree, the approach is different. In the dynamic tree, uh, we make more efficient use of memory because we don't estimate the stock price tree in one fell swoop. We actually estimate the tree, the, the stock prices, as we pass through the nodes. So, in other words, in the backward recursion, Every time we uh, have to invoke the stock price, we generate the stock price. And we don't define it uh, two by two. We don't define a two-dimensional um, tree. We define an option value in, in terms of i, and the i represent the number of nodes in any given in, in any given uh, array. So in other words, we estimate, we only estimate these stock prices when we're estimating these option values. And that has the effect of saving uh, memory. So the, the dynamic tree is in fact, it never produces the entire set of stock prices and stores them. In, in one go, it rather estimates dynamically each set of stock prices and then passes back the values through backward induction. And that's a much more efficient way of generating the option price.